The Leafs mature real quick to sweep the Capitals. We'll recap that win for you guys and tee up this weekend's matchup against the Sabres. And what the heck happened to Timothy Lilligren? All that more coming up on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, a daily Maple Leaf centric podcast hosted by myself, Mike DiStefano, and my co-host, Dave Morissuti. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 bucks if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On to get started. The Toronto Parlay hit today, Dave. The Toronto Parlay, the first one of the year where the Jays and Leafs both victorious on the same day. So hopefully a couple of our listeners uh, went and laid a couple of bucks on the Toronto Parlay over on FanDuel. You uh, won yourself some cha-ching. 5-1 was the final. The Maple Leafs beat the Washington Capitals. They complete the sweep. They put themselves Four points back up on the Tampa Bay Lightning in the race for third in the Atlantic. Um, A great response game from the Toronto Maple Leafs. I mean, we talked about how that was an immature game Tuesday night against the Devils. I believe the word of choice for Sheldon Keefe today was tidy. It was a tidy win for Toronto, and that's really exactly what it was. I thought they dictated this game from start to finish, full 60-minute effort from all 18 players, 19, throw Joseph Wall out there too, uh, 100%. Uh, 48 shots on net, you had four different goal scorers. Um, just a really, really solid game all around from the Maple Leafs tonight, Dave. What'd you think? Yeah, mature response. Like it, It's hard to pick apart really that game and... I mean, first off, I mean, they must have gotten some sort of energy from the Blue Jays absolutely smacking the Rays at the Trop, which you'd never see. So they must have been like, we got we to gotta pick ourselves up here, guys. We got to make sure that we go two for two here and make the fans really happy after that uh, that performance. And and look, they did, right? They, they dictated play right off the hop. You know, Austin Matthews, he was ill going into the game, didn't know if he was going to play. And that line, I think they set the tone, really. Yeah, and they, like for a second there, I thought he was about to have a flu game. Like he was, he was so good tonight. He didn't score. He didn't find the back of the net. Although they really tried late in that game to yeah. get him a goal. Um, but I thought Matthews was spectacular. Like if if you wouldn't have told me ahead of the game that he was dealing with an illness and was a game time decision because he was sick, I would have never known that with the amount of jump that he had in this game. No, exactly right. That to me, it was like. He's sick. Didn't didn't look like whatever he was dealing with. He fought through it, and like credit to him for that because we you know the illness is really kind of taking a bite out of this team the last God knows yeah. how many months <laughs> that they've been dealing with guys being ill. But you know, well, we're, just, we're literally just talking about this on either yesterday's podcast or the day before. How it just feels like everyone, like someone's getting sick for the last like i don't know four five six weeks almost it seems like there's been an illness in the room that just keeps on going around and then it's like hitting up a second wave with some of these players and then today matthews didn't go for practice and then was a game time decision but obviously did uh did end up playing cool stat about tonight's game by the way dave every single maple leafs player was a plus player tonight for Toronto. Everyone was on the ice for a goal um, and everybody left uh, as a plus player, which I think that as, as much as we diminish the plus minus stat, what that tells me is there was a lot of depth scoring in this game and you had contributions up and down the lineup, which was uh, huge for tonight's game. Like you didn't get a single goal from the core four, yet they still were able to put up five. You get two goals from Tyler Bertuzzi. 
You get a goal from uh, Bobby McMahon. Dio Gio started the scoring when he returned to the uh, to the ice. And then Connor Dewar, congrats to Connor Dewar, now in the record books as a Maple Leafs goal scorer. So uh, a, a big night from the depth as well. Yeah, I mean, you look at I, and I, I I follow hockey start hockey stat cards. One of my favorite follows on X and. Yeah, pretty much everyone on the positive side tonight. They even had to like move the negative part of the chart down so they can <laughs> expand on the positive part, which I thought was pretty uh was pretty telling of how good the Leafs were tonight. Like they're just top to bottom as you said, the depth really did come through and just relentless. It could have this game could have also been a very frustrating one given how Charlie Lindgren was playing. Like, yeah, the Leafs put up five goals. He was still pretty outstanding in this game. Like he kept Matthews off the board a few times. He's the reason why Matthews is 60 right now. Yeah. Um, and like the Capitals, I was I was I was surprised. Like the, this is a team that's in the middle of a playoff race right now. They're tr- they're pushing every game matters for them. And they they just the mistakes they made, like especially the second Bertuzzi goal. Where Lindgren leaves the puck behind, the defenseman's like got it, but doesn't have it, and it's just an easy, easy goal there for Bertuzzi. Like, man, just a really poor effort from Washington. But like, the Leafs have had the number all year, and you got nice. <laughs> isn't it nice to be on the other side of one of those blunders, though, Dave? Isn't was... it nice to be on the other side of one of those? <laughs> like, it feels like all the time we're talking about how Toronto fumbles the puck in their back end, especially in the playoffs, it seems like, where they, you know, a grenade goes off and, and the puck just explodes off their stick right onto the opposition, and it's in the back of the net seconds later. It's nice to to have the shoe on the other foot for once with uh, with Bertuzzi. But I mean, like that's that's what pressure does. Like when you're forechecking, that's what it does. It forces the team into making an incorrect decision or, you know, pulling their head up really quickly. And then if the puck takes a little bit of a bounce, if it hits a rut or it hits a little bit of uh, snow on the ice, it could bounce off your stick. And that's exactly what happened. And it was created by the pressure and the urgency that both Domi and Tyler Bertuzzi both laid. That's why we talk about like get in on the forecheck. Like you get in on the forecheck, you cause turnovers. That's that's how you do it realistically. And you know when you do that, good things happen. So mm-hmm. Toronto, you know they've tried to to get some players who are more willing to get in on the forecheck. Like Connor Dewar is a guy who is you know brought in to be a a guy who could forecheck, backcheck, he could do it all. Um, and his goal wasn't necessarily the forecheck. His goal was more so set up by his backcheck. But it's like that 200 foot game that you you know that this team has to play. Uh, it's what Keith continually is preaching on a nightly basis. And when they do play a simple, tidy, complete 200 foot game, they usually come away with victories like this. I don't know why they don't do it more often, Dave. It's a mindset. <laughs> that's, that's, we've talked about this with so many times. It's just a mindset of knowing that you got to be the ones to dictate. The pace and what I liked, especially in this game, was when the Capitals were in the leaf zone, it wasn't a free pass for them, right? The the defensemen were on top of them, the pressure, mm-hmm. right? Like Giordano going in on guys as soon as they come into the zone, Simon Benoit boxing out guys. That's what you got to do. You, you can't just do it on the offensive side. We've seen this team for check, we've seen them put pressure and cycle the puck. But you got to do it on the other end too, where you got to make it tough on your opponent when they come in your own zone. And and that to me was the biggest change from the Devils game. You know, they were smart. They weren't they weren't trying too hard. They were being, you know, they knew that they had to have pressure on the forecheck, but they also knew we got to make sure that we're we're keeping uh tabs in our own zone. And that was apparent because that might have been one of the easiest performances Joseph Wall has ever had to have in the net. Yeah, honestly, like, yeah, he had to, I think he faced 25 shots, so he had to make 24 stops, but like here, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to pull up the, the heat map here just to show you guys like what we're looking at. And when we look at a heat map, what exactly we're trying to decipher. And if you look at this, you look at how red it was for the Maple Leafs, you know, all of their goals scored from right in here, right in tight below the hash marks, the one goal, obviously up here. Uh, from Giordano, but you you got all three of these goals and it's beat red right in front of the goaltender because the Maple Leafs, they went to that area. You look at the Capitals, 
there's not a whole lot of redness here. There's zero redness, mm-hmm. actually. There's barely any blue, which mm-hmm. means they kept everything to the outside. Most of the shots came from the top of the circle right over here. And if you look and you go and check and see, okay, well, uh, what was the average shot distance for Joseph Wall? 54 feet. The average shot distance that Joseph Wall faced tonight from the Capitals at 5 on 5 was from 54 feet out. So the Maple Leafs did uh, a tremendous job forcing everything to the outside, did not allow, you know, the Capitals to get inside at all tonight, and it just made for such an easy game for Joseph Wall, but you know, hey, it that's good. That's great. I would love more of those performances. I'm sure Joseph Wall doesn't want to be bailing out his team 10, 12 times a game. So he'll take those performances uh, from the people in front of him, you know, 10 times out of 10, I'm sure. Oh, yeah. I mean, if that's a playoff game right there, that you can't ask for anything better in terms of having that, you know, focus on both ends of the ice and then making, again, Joseph Wall, we wanted to see how he would bounce back. But Sheldon Keefe made it known to say that we need to play better in front of him. So the both both sides took, did their part in this one. But again, like Wall allowed, yes, there were a couple of goals that for sure were were tough that you know Joseph Wall didn't have a chance on. Some of those goals in tight, but you know you look at two or three of those goals from the game against Jersey, where it's like, nah, you don't love that one. Like that first goal from Luke Hughes. You didn't love that one, right? Mm-hmm. Buddy skates right over the blue line and shoots it right away. It's like that. You got to have those ones, right? So those those gimme saves, um, he was there for. He didn't allow any of those uh, any of those stinkers tonight. So he, he does need to get, um, you know, not rewarded, but acknowledged that he made the saves that he had to make. Um, one of the other big storylines from tonight, we talked about Matthews being game time decision, being sick and having a pretty good game. We talked about the depth scoring, which really stepped up. Another big storyline was the absence of Timothy Lilligren last second scratch from this game, which allowed them to activate Mark Giordano, who scores the first goal of the game to get the party started and gave a nice little point up to the heavens to his father. That was cool to see. Um, but what the heck is going on with Timothy Lilligren? Let's take a break, Dave. Come back, get into uh, what we heard post game from Sheldon Keefe uh, on Lilligren and his status with the Maple Leafs um, going forward. And uh, we'll get to our three stars of the game and help tee up tomorrow night's game between the Leafs and the Buffalo Sabres. So, all that and more to come on the other side. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morrisuti. You're listening to the Locked On Leafs podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team. Every day. Today's episode is brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your ride or die alive. eBay Motors has everything you need to maintain your vehicle and level it up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors has got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll always find exactly what you're looking for. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or or your money back because the eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the price you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only, exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit, only available to U.S. customers. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morris Sudi with you. We are your hosts here at Locked On Lease. We've got new episodes coming at you every single weekday. That's five shows a week, Monday through Friday. Uh, you can find them on whichever platform you use to get your podcast audio wise and also uh, video form up on YouTube. And just a reminder, we are still on our road to 5K subscribers. Once we get to 5,000 subscribers on YouTube, we'll be giving away a jersey. We need less than 200 subscribers. Less than 200. I think it's less than 180. We got like, like 175 or something like that left to go. We're, we're, we're inching closer and closer, and we're hoping to get there by the playoffs. So still a couple of weeks for everyone to sub up. But I know there's like 40% of our listenership that uh, are unsubscribed listeners each episode. So there's a lot of you. There's a lot of you out there who listen but aren't subscribed quite yet, uh, which is okay. But if you want to have a chance to win yourself a lease jersey for the 
hopeful long Leafs playoff run, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, Locked on Leafs. Um, three stars of the night tonight. The Toronto Maple Leafs with a win over the Washington Capitals. 5-1 was the final. They complete the sweep of the Capitals by winning all three goals this season. Um, let's start with your first star of the night. First star, sorry, third star. We never start the first star. Mm. I don't know what I was talking about. Third star of the night, Mr. Dave Morissuti. I'm going to go with Mark Giordano. Zio Gio, you know, he hasn't played since he hasn't played in a while. Obviously, dealing with the concussion, coming back from that. Yeah. 12 games, and, I think 12 games. Yeah, 12 game absence and scores a goal. Obviously, he gives a little salute uh, to his father who passed away. So, obviously, that was uh, something that, you know, he was hoping to get a chance to do. And he hasn't scored in forever. Like, you look at some of the goalless streaks um, on those Dude. on the Leafs, or just it, <laughs> TJ Brody, what was it like? A hundred, like almost it was a hundred something goals. Was it like one hundred three games of the goal or something like that? Yeah, he was, was trying. <laughs> yeah, he was actually. He had a couple, a couple shots on that tonight. What's funny about that uh, that list is four of the top five either are or were Maple Leafs in the last two years, and then the third one, who was Tobias Bjarnfot, um, people pointed out he was actually selected with the draft pick that the Leafs sent L.A. for Jake Muzzin. So there's Leafs ties all over the place with the uh, that statistic, cool. which I thought was uh, which of was kind of How, how do you make it about the Leafs? There's always some way to do it. Of yeah, course. so I, I just thought, you know, what he showed tonight was a guy goes down, you need to put him in a playoff game. Yeah, I'm okay with Margeno playing a playoff game. Now, do I want him playing – Along, you know, for the rest of the season. I mean, injuries will uh, will obviously dictate that a little bit. And he actually said that he prefers to play, get into a rhythm rather than getting rest, which he kind of said that last year. But we knew that he was falling off a little bit last year. But tonight, well, I, think, I, I, I think it's like mentally for him, he can stay yes. engaged. And it's a mindset where he feels better when he's playing every night. But. You know, I, I I think we have to agree that at this point in his career, the Leafs are probably better off if he doesn't play every night. And I think he's realized that and he's learned that. Mm -hmm. And I think there there was an understanding going into the year that that could be a possibility. And he's open to being, a, you know, a seventh defenseman for this team and just being kind of someone to lean on for advice with a guy with a lot of experience, which is great. The, the, the Leafs, you know, need people like that and players like that and geo can be that um i gave my third star to to like i cheated but like this patchwork blue line <laughs> like yeah. you look at who was in the blue line tonight who was on the ice tonight you had brody and labushkin yeah benoit mccabe they've been together all season they've been solid another solid night tonight and then geo and timmons like morgan riley out joel edmondson out and then timothy lilligren was a late scratch randomly after skating this morning and being a part of practice and it really threw people off mm -hmm. um hey it really threw me off when you I, heard Sheldon Keefe after the game then yeah, going I was, to say. I, so I was debating if I want to get into that first or talk about this blue line but I, I guess we can go there first um so why don't you go ahead with the update on on Lilligren yeah we were we were preparing for the show and I see a little notification. I, I get a notification from all the Leaf reporters. And Luke Fox tweeted out saying, yeah, uh, Sheldon Keefe said after the game that Timothy Logan is going to miss some time for us, which usually means don't expect Timothy Logan to play for a while. Like, this is like a long-term thing, not a day-to-day -day thing. I, I, not day-to-day, -day, but like, I don't know, when you say long-term, like we may have two different viewpoint I, of long I would say a couple weeks at least probably yeah probably see to me that's not long term though yeah like it's it's going to be a few games obviously um but yeah so it, it, Timothy Lilligren which is unfortunate because he was one of the players who had a lot to prove he still had to you know earn his spot in the lineup and now with an injury uh it's an upper body injury is what we've been told 
um, cost him the game tonight and moving forward, obviously, for a, an unknown amount of time. But, you know, that that means that there's a, an opportunity and a spot for someone else to step up. And, you know, obviously, I think everyone wants Simon Benoit to be that guy. But now you're stuck with the lefty righty imbalance again. So we'll see what ends up happening and, and who ends up winning out the, the spots if Lilligren can't go come game one of the playoffs, um, what this blue line looks like. But despite who they were missing tonight, no Edmondson, no Lilligren, no Riley, no problem. They were great. I thought they were terrific. All three pairs, like Brody and Labushkin, you know, led the team with a 78% expected goals. They were on the ice for two goals. They only gave up two high danger chances throughout the entire night. Ben Juan McCabe uh, were, had a 65% expected goals when they were out there on the ice. They outchanced a uh, high danger chance, their opponent 6-2 to two when they were on the ice with only one ozone start. A majority of their starts were in the defensive end, getting the tough minutes against, you know, Ovechkin's line. Despite that, they didn't spend a lot of time in their own end. They were, you know, forcing the puck up uh, up the other way, and they weren't allowing a whole lot. They outshot their opposition eleven to five when they were out there on the ice. And then, you know, Giordano and and Timmins, he did not expect to see that pairing tonight, but they're pretty solid as well. The shot attempts were twenty to nine when they were out there. High danger chances seven to one with those guys out there uh, with each other. So uh, a pretty solid night, and obviously. Zio Gio with a goal to get things going. Um, and Timmons was throwing around the body a little bit, I, I will mm-hmm. say. Had a couple of hits tonight, uh, which which was something, again, unexpected to see. So I thought the Patrick blue line for me um, definitely deserves a, a lot of credit. I think the forwards played well, too. Don't get me wrong. like It was a full five-man unit, full team effort defensively. But considering the, the holes on the back end with who was out tonight, I thought they stepped up big time against a team that's been playing really well. So yeah. for sure, I think the blue line deserves a lot of credit. Uh, your second star. I'm going to go with depth scoring. Mm. Taking the page out of your book and cheat a little bit here. Love but it. I mean, it was apparent. I mean, look, when Connor Dewar scores, you know, he got some depth scoring tonight and like some good, <laughs> good heads up play. Cause I like, Give David Camp credit. It was a good pass. Ryan Reeves just did not expect it to happen, so went off his skate. And Connor Dewar was just in the right place, right time, was able to bang it home. And, yeah. uh, you know, we'll again, turn, turn and swat. A little turn and yeah. swat type of goal. Exactly. So, yeah, I thought, you know, him, he was pretty good. I mean, him getting goal, that's good for his confidence. You know, he's trying. Like, they've thrown a lot at him since he's been brought in, right? Like, he's mm-hmm. been had to be the defense. He's like the defensive guy that, you know, keep his throne in any defensive situation. So getting goals is always nice for the confidence there. Obviously, you got Bobby McMahon scoring again. Didn't think Great that pass. goal was going to go in. Great pass from Tavares, though. Oh, yeah. Really good pass. Yeah, because, you know, he had the defenseman in a pretty good spot to try to break up the pass, got it through, and Lindgren eh, just, just missed that one. Just yeah. didn't get it. Yeah. Got a piece, but not the whole thing. Not nope. enough. Not so, enough. Again, that's important. It's knowing that you're going to have guys that can step up to score those goals. Bob McMahon's been doing it consistently enough. Other guys throughout the line have been doing it enough. And there's one specifically I want to keep out from the rest because he did get my first start for tonight. Oh, I would imagine that's uh, the, the guy who I have as my second star. And that would probably be Tyler Bertuzzi, I would imagine. It would yeah. be. Yeah. Two goals tonight for uh, for Tyler Bertuzzi, you know, and I thought that he had a, a really solid game himself as well. Uh, it, it's so funny. You look at the season that he's had, and they broke it down in the broadcast. He had seven goals in his first 55 games, and he's at 11 in his last 15. Like, it, it, it's the complete opposite of what it was earlier in the year. Earlier, couldn't buy a goal. And now he's getting these like cheeky bank goals off the off the ass of the goalie, <laughs> like from behind the net. Like it, everything's going well for this guy now. It's it's funny how you know the pendulum swings so much and everything eventually evens out. He was in had the worst luck all season long. Now he's getting good luck, and it always ends up leveling out in the end. And Bertuzzi, a couple of goals tonight uh, to kind of lead the way, lead the charge. 
for the Maple Leafs. He was he was my second star too. So, well, I'm gonna use a Sheldon Keith quote here to kind of describe the flip of Tyler Bertuzzi's season. Puck luck is a big part of it, big part of it. Today he gets one below the goal line, and he couldn't get one above the goal line or into empty nets for the longest time. Right. Like I to me, the thing with Tyler Bertuzzi, you know, when a lot of people are like, ah, this is not really working out. He's not really getting produced offensively. I said, no one can have that much bad luck for as long as Tyler Bertuzzi has had. We're talking like hitting posts, missing empty nets, eventually, right? The effort's been there. He is he kept trying. We knew that eventually goals were gonna start to trickle in. And it all started really for I like for me the game that kind of started was that game against Colorado where he got the hat trick. And it's like yep. all right, like Tyler Bertuzzi's getting on that roll right now. And he hasn't been he, he's been consistent at it ever since. And yeah, sure, defensively, there's always gonna be those th- you know, those concerns, but that's the type of guy that they're gonna need come playoff time because he's scoring those goals the tough way. Right, he's going to the areas that he need, he knows he needs to go to to score, and so yeah, I've been very impressed with Tyler Bertuzzi. I'm also very happy that he's able to do this while playing with Austin Matthews because we didn't think that that was going to even be a thing because he was trying so hard on that top line and it wasn't working out. We thought ah, maybe we got to go somewhere else, and it's well, worked. It might not continue that way. We might see another switch, but I think at least for now. This puts him in a good spot. And for me also, what I like is it doesn't put Matthew Nyes in a pressure situation where he has to produce on that top line offensively. Yeah, I will be curious to see how this works out when Marner gets back because we haven't seen it with Marner, right? Like Bertuzzi right. and Matthews only got uh, reunited when Marner went down to injury. So uh, the Bertuzzi-Matthews duo is starting to gain some chemistry. Domi in that you know mold as well. Um, I will be curious to see what happens when Marner comes back and if that continues. I'd imagine it would. I do. I, I do think that it will work uh, much better than it did earlier in the season. Yeah. But uh, until I see it, I guess I can't believe it. Um, yeah, like I had that Theo you know, Matthews as my as my first star tonight. I mean, you could really just say that whole line of him, Bertuzzi, Domi, like they were just they're magnificent. But Matthews, fourteen shot attempts, ten shots on goal. Um, I mean, he probably should have had at least two, at least two goals, uh, tonight. If it weren't for Charlie Lindgren, absolutely stonewalling him a couple of times. And I thought that he just had a really good 200 foot game too. And, and for someone who claimed to be sick pregame to go out and dominate right away, right off the hop, you know, first couple shifts, he was noticeable, extremely noticeable. And, uh, you know, he was skating around the way that, you know, he needs to, to have success and a sneaky stick in the offensive end, man, just that, that to me, when the Leafs are at their best, that's, that's what's happening. Like they, they're consistently turning pucks over at the blue line and, you know, keeping play alive, keep the, the possessions alive. You know, Bertuzzi did that a couple of times. Matthews did that. Matthew Nyes is actually really good at that. He's got a sneaky stick too. Yeah. someone who just, you know, just is just a disruptor sometimes to keep possession alive for, uh, for the Maple Leafs when, you know, the opposition is trying to clear it. And the Leafs did a good job tonight of making sure that or they made it difficult to clear the zone and, uh, you know, kept those second and, and third opportunities. And, you know, a couple of them turned out to be, uh, to be fruitful with some goals. So uh, just an all around really great night. I mean, it, it was tough doing the three stars because I thought that there were many, many players who were, uh, who were worthy of getting, you know, shout outs from, uh, from us here when we do our three star segments, I, I thought everybody played well and it was a really, really good game. Top to bottom uh, from puck drop to the final buzzer, real solid game from the Maple Leafs and hopefully they can keep it going. Hopefully. Um, speaking of keeping it going, they got the Buffalo Sabres tomorrow night. Uh, why don't we take a quick break, come back, preview that one, and uh, I don't know who's going to play tomorrow. We'll discuss who we think uh, will or won't be in the lineup with uh, the injury and the uh, sick bug 
going around in the Leafs locker room. So we'll get to all of that on the other side. It's Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. You're listening to the Lockdown Leafs podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. It's your team every day. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs podcast. Mike DiStefano and Dave Morissuti. We have the Maple Leafs back in action tomorrow night against the Buffalo Sabres. A little battle at QEW. Toronto, take the, take the QEW down across the Peace Bridge and into Buffalo, my friend. Do you remember what happened last time Toronto went to Buffalo? Yes, Mike. I remember what happened. I was not very happy. Yeah, it all- yeah. It also led to the Ilya Samsonov needs to leave and spend some time away from hockey talk. Yes. So you can look at it as a positive. You can look at it as a positive, right? Because realizing that and then placing him on waivers and then what he's done since he's come back has been spectacular. So, hey, I'm glad it happened, right? Learned experiences. I'm glad it happened because guess what? Now there's an opportunity for Samsonov who is backing up tonight, so I assume he's good to go if called upon, should go into this game and really look at this team, the Buffalo Sabres squad, who embarrassed him, who forced him out of the NHL for a period of time, made him look into the mirror and reevaluate who he is as a hockey player and go in there and beat their ass. That is what I would love to see happen tomorrow, Dave. I would love nothing more than for Sam to go back into that building where he gave up, we gave up like five goals on like nine shots. It was brutal, absolutely terrible. Like it was just couldn't stop a beach ball that night. Um, they gave up nine goals as a whole. They lost nine to three that night back in December. And uh, I would love nothing more than for him to go in there and put up like a 32 save performance where the Leafs win like five one again. I mean, with the way the Sabres have been playing, it's very much possible. Uh, they have <laughs> they went on a little bit of a surge when they made the trade for Bowen Byram, but then yeah. they came down to earth a little bit here. You know it's bad when you lose 6-2 to the Ottawa Senators. Yeah. yeah. Oh, they're going to be on the second half of a back-to-back, too. They yep. have the Devils Friday night and then the, the Leafs on Saturday. So you get a tired Buffalo squad, so you better make sure that uh, you're ready to go right away. Right from puck drop, take it to them because they might be a little tired at the gate and definitely later in the game. Just completely take it to them. Honestly, copy and paste what happened in, in Washington or against Washington tonight. Copy and paste that against Buffalo, and I guarantee you the Leafs will win that game. I mean, the, the thing that the Leafs have going for them going to this game is they probably have a lot of memory of what happened in that game. Mm. And if this Washington game showed anything, it's that, you know what? They've talked a lot about how they need to get better. They need to learn from the mistakes. They did. They did it against Washington. Like they you they put their words to action. So hopefully they do the same thing against Buffalo, where they look back on a very embarrassing. Like I'm talking like that might have been one of the worst games I've seen the least play since they had the same thing happen against Nashville. A few years ago, like years that, ago, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure we came on this podcast the next day and said that was the most embarrassing loss in the Matthews Marner era. And it yeah. was, it was, it, it, it completely what you lose nine to three to the Buffalo Sabres, who at the time couldn't buy a win, and you get just absolutely demolished by them. Um, yeah, it was, it was awful. And, and it wasn't just Samsonov, like the whole team was terrible, uh, that night. Um, yeah, a, a bounce back, a rebound performance is, is mandatory uh, for this team, I would think. And again, like you don't even have to think back. Just just play your game. Like, yeah. honestly, the least just play their game the way that they played it tonight. They will have success. They yeah. really, really will. Who's going to play tomorrow, though? Like, <laughs> is it going to be the same lineup? Like, I, it's crazy. I think a very similar lineup. I think you probably get Samson off back in. Like yeah. if they feel Sam I and mean, Samson said he's good to go, you probably get Samson off back in, and then, yeah, like who who would return? Like if Morgan Riley isn't a hundred percent, don't play him. Like we don't need to lose another defenseman for long term. Yeah. Like for long term, plus the Leafs win games without Riley all the time. Yeah, Leafs are better off without Morgan Riley. 
Just kidding. That's obviously a joke. But anyways, that is a joke. Although yeah. stats would suggest the stats <laughs> would suggest quality of competition, guys. Call QOC. Always remember that one. Uh, I'm not going to open up that can of worms uh, tonight on the podcast, Dave. That's okay. We um, had someone in the discord say the Leafs are better off without Mitch Marner. And I didn't want to open that one either. Yeah. But like, again, probably going into this same game without the same cast of characters. I would imagine Riley's not going to play. Uh, we already know that Edmondson, Marner, Yarncroc, and now Lilligren, who I guess is going to miss uh, miss some time, are guaranteed not to play. So I guess the only guy who's kind of up in the air is Morgan Riley. And then you just got to hope that no one gets sick between now and Saturday. But who knows with this team? Like, Jesus Louise, it seems like every other game yeah. someone's getting sick. The sniffles. I don't know what the hell's going on with this team. Um, but yeah, it probably going to be missing a bunch of players again. So another shorthanded leaf squad this time, they'll be going out on the road, but, uh, you know, they, they, they are a better team than Buffalo. I know Buffalo has given them a lot of fits, uh, throughout, uh, throughout the last few years. But I mean, even with the, the guys they're missing, they still should beat the Sabres. They still should be able to do it. If they just stick to the game, play simple, play tidy as, uh, Sheldon Keefe, um, describe the game tonight and things should go well for them. So, uh, should be, should be a decent game. Should be a decent game. Looking forward to it. Uh, any other final comments you want to make heading into the weekend, buddy? Well, I will say one thing because I, I just quickly looked at the standings and we know that we were talking about the Leafs potentially, you know, in it being in a potential wild card situation. They're also six game bits back on the Panthers who have played not so great lately. And if go look at Paul Maurice's comments after the game, they're six games back, have one game in hand, and also play two games against the Panthers coming up. The Leafs have a game in hand? The Leafs have a game in hand. That is interesting, because you win that game in hand, and you win both games against the Panthers, you're tied. Yep, and I think, what is it? Our, well, ROW would be the first, or regulation wins would be the first tiebreaker. Yeah, okay. which I'd imagine Florida has. Yeah, Florida has. I mean, Florida just blows away. And well, because the Leafs and Bruins can't win a game of five on five. Remember for the longest time. Yeah, yeah, true. But also, hey, we don't want to. We don't want to play at home. What are you talking about? <laughs> it's gonna play at home. Why? Why are you talking about? They just they just play their best game at home in a really no, long. No, time. no, no, no. One game does not does not change things. Okay. This game, this team does not want to play and start at home. They want to start on the road, win those games, and then hopefully they have a little bit of success on home ice. So, so what they, Florida's doing is purposely losing so that the Leafs can get the home ice advantage. And probably. The are like, we got them where we want them. Probably. Did you see what happened last time? The Leafs, uh, the Leafs had home ice advantage against Florida. Yeah, I do remember. They lost all three games. They were 0-3 against yeah. Florida on uh, on home ice last year in the playoffs. So I wouldn't, wouldn't surprise me if that's what they were doing, and that's why you had Paul Maurice being coy. He, Yeah, just go and listen to his comments. It's hilarious. He was not too thrilled. <laughs> um, he was reading Paul Maurice, but in, I think yeah. in a way that just kind of goes above and beyond. And there's some things that I can't even repeat on this podcast. Otherwise, uh, we'll get flagged by YouTube. Love it, yeah. Paul Maurice and John Totorella, two old school coaches, but like, dude, I could listen to them t- speak for hours. I really, really could. Uh, yeah. So I, I mean, I, I doubt the Leafs catch up to to Florida. I think the Panthers will, you know, get themselves uh, back in into a good spot rather soon. Although they're what one in five in the last six since Ekblad got hurt. One of four, something like that. Like well, Ekblad, and Ekblad came back tonight too against the. Did come back? Okay, because like their losing streak kind of coincided with Ekblad's injury. So if he's back, I would assume that they'll get their their uh, they'll get themselves back in order relatively soon. But um, yeah, I I still believe the Leafs. It's either going to be third place or drop into the final wild card spot. I I think hoping to still get. St- home ice advantage is a, a bit of a pipe dream um at this point in the season there's only what 10 games to go now final 10 final, final 10. 10 all right we'll uh we'll leave it there um that'll do it for us here today on the podcast 
I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to the Locked On Leafs podcast on all platforms and receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on X at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. And follow the show as well at Locked On Leafs. We'll be back with another episode for you guys on Monday. Enjoy the games this weekend. Uh, Leafs, Sabres, Saturday night, 7 o'clock puck drop. Go Leafs, go. But until then, keep it locked right here on Locked On Leafs.